so this scene's looking pretty good. Um, one thing I want to do is I want to get into this canopy and just customize it a bit. So I'm going to switch off my top layer, this grade. I'm going to click on element um, and open up the controls here and click on scene setup. Then I want to access glass, the surface called glass. And under reflection, I want to probably turn up the Fresnel effect a bit. Maybe that's a bit too harsh. Let's try like 0.98. Um, and the Fresnel, Fresnel bias. We'll just play with that as well. Somewhere there. And I think maybe this is a bit too dark. So let's just take our opacity down to say 60. And let's see how... Uh, also, I want to get rid of this little specular hotspot because our plane is kind of being backlit as opposed to frontlit. So I'll just turn the specular right off. Let's say OK and see what we're getting here. There we go. I feel that looks a bit better. OK, so onto some animation. So if I do a quick RAM preview of what we have now, there you can see we've got our jet flying along in a perfectly straight line. No turbulence at this point, but our background is animating. So let's get into some camera animation. I'd like our camera to sort of orbit around this aircraft as it flies. So what I'll need to do is this background layer, I'll need to make it a 3D layer. So let's do that. Um, and what happens is by default, it's being affected by the lights. So open it up um, and under material options, say under accept lights, switch that to off, accept shadows, just say off as well for safety. I'm gonna access its position properties. If you recall our jet, or our jet null was situated at minus 1350. So let's take this layer, the background, and let's push it into the distance. Let's push it to say positive 5000. Wham, there it is. We'll need to size it up now to fit our comp. So I'm scaling it up. There we go. Happy with that. And now you'll remember we selected a two node camera. So I've set this camera's point of interest to be the same as where our jet is at. By default, it will probably be zero. Um, so you need to just change that value to wherever your object of interest is. And now I'll create a keyframe for the camera position here at frame or at zero. I'll scrub forward to the end of the timeline. And now if I animate the camera up or down, you get this wonderful depth effect. Um, so maybe that should actually be our start position. We can start above the aircraft. So I'm just going to swap these keyframes around. There we go. Right, I'll just, uh, we'll watch a little three second RAM preview to get the picture. So there you can see we're getting this nice sort of camera orbit around our aircraft as it flies. Still, things are feeling very smooth. So the next step is gonna to be to work in a little bit of randomness in terms of our camera. So I'll open up camera position and I'm gonna just alt click the stopwatch here to access expressions. And I'll use a simple wiggle expression here. Wiggle, I'll say maybe, you know, once per second and let's say amount, hard, hard to gauge, let's say maybe two pixels. Let's see what that gives us. It might be a bit too extreme. And then I also want to put a little bit of variation on the camera rotation. So I'll open up its rotation properties. And uh, let's say on the X axis, we'll put a wiggle of twice per second and 0.2 of a degree. And on our Y axis, we'll do the same. Point zero 0.01. Let's actually make this value also point 0.1. And the other thing I want to add a bit of randomness to is the, the roll or the bank of our aircraft. So I'll open up the F-22 null and on its X rotation property I will also add a wiggle property wiggle. And again I'll also say once a second, let's say maybe Two degrees I hope that's not too much we'll see in a minute and there you can see what we're getting 
nice bit of bump as if we are flying along and we're being slightly affected by a bit of turbulence and also the F-22 has got a little bit of uh, play in it you know it's not just perfect level flight anymore which is great so now that we're happy with our camera animation and the general sort of bobbing and weaving on our F-22 let's set up the roll animation so I'm going to step forward to around three seconds here and on our F-22 null just to open up all the transform properties, I'm going to keyframe position and I am going to keyframe X rotation and Y rotation. Then I'm going to step forward four seconds and what I want to do is then roll on the X axis, well, other way. I'm going to roll sort of almost to 90 degrees, probably around there, yeah. Um, and then I also need to just change the heading a little bit on the y-axis. So I'm going to just tilt the nose off center, probably to around there. And finally, the position, I am going to move down. Because so we're trying to create the impression that this jet has kind of banked off and it's, we've carried on traveling. Now this jet is turned off, so it's almost lost speed relative to us. And its position would also drop back. So let's push it back to about there, drop it down a bit more. There we go. And what I want to do now is on all of these keyframes, I want to put an easy ease out. You can't see this, it's falling off the screen, but I'm saying easy ease out. And on these, I'm going to say keyframe assistant easy ease in. Now for the banking on the x-axis, I'll leave that to about a second. Um, if I just scrub this, you can see what we're getting. It looks a bit weird right now, but we're going to start moving keyframes around to change things. So the bank, can, or, the bank or the roll can happen over one second. Um, the positional change you want to happen over a bit longer, probably, you know, almost double the duration that the roll takes. And then your heading offset or your Y rotation, you want to match that. And then what you want to do is you want to grab these keyframes now, which are sort of working in tandem and you want to just shift them back to start probably halfway through the roll. So what you're going to get if I just scrub through it roughly is the plane's going to start to roll like that and as it rolls it's going to lose, appear to lose speed and it's going to drop out of shot. Sure, computer's struggling a bit but you get the picture. These keyframes are going to need a little bit of finessing just to stop them being too jarring. So on our positional keyframe, I'll click the first frame and I'll open up the graph editor. And just this curve, I will drag it a little bit right to make it a little bit more of an ease out. And likewise on our heading, I'll also just ease that out a bit more gently. And probably the same on our roll. Let's have a look here. Not too substantially, but probably somewhere there. Let's get out of our graph editor. And what I'll do is I'll set our work area to just this section. And let's do a RAM preview of that. So there you can see what we're getting. Um, not 100% correct, but you can really craft these keyframes and move them around until you're happy with them. Um, if I look at this, it looks like our heading of our nose needs to start to change sooner. So if I just drag this keyframe left, there we go. So we start to feel that happening. Maybe this can also move to there. Um, you know, there, this will probably give you a better idea. So the, the, the heading on the nose starts to change as our aircraft dives out of frame. So that's great. Uh, I'm, like I say, you can really finesse this animation, but for our purposes, this will do. Um, the next thing I'm noticing is these lights are on, which, you know, I'm not too fond of being a daylight scene. Let's go into element quickly. Sorry about the train in the background. Um, let's go into element scene setup, and let's just switch those off. So you need to click on this body layer and down here in the properties is a property illumination. 
and it's at 150 at the moment. By default, let's put that at zero. And there we go, our lights go off. Let's say okay. Return to After Effects, there we go, lights are off. Um, so yeah, happy with that. So now the next step is to address our fake ray tracing. For those of you who don't know what ray tracing is, it's basically where 3D software simulates shadows. Now, you know, if you look at this scene, it's looking pretty good, but you notice that we're supposed to be in sunlight, yet these tails, these two tails here, are not casting a shadow onto the wing, as one would expect. So the way we're going to address that is to go to our project. I am going to make a folder here just called Textures. So what you're going to do is you're going to import the textures that uh, Jetstrike is referencing for this Jet model. Um, you'll find them in the same directory as you find the models. So if I go ahead and put the diffuse layer into a comp of its own, let's just zoom out. So what you're going to actually do is you're going to add your shadows here in the diffuse map and they'll show up in the scene. So let's add a new black solid. There we go. And let's set it to multiply. Let's drop its opacity to around 50%. So we can see what we're doing. And I'm just gonna zoom in here a bit. And what you wanna do is grab your mask tool. I happen to know that this area here corresponds to the side we're seeing on the plane in our other comp. So I'm gonna just draw a very rough shadow. Let's add a bit of feather to this mask. Right, so there we go, we've got a bit of shadow. I'll turn the opacity back up on this to around 75%. So what we have to do now is set up this diffuse map as a custom layer, a custom texture layer. So what we'll do is this diffuse comp, we will drop into our F22 comp, maybe just keep it at the bottom so it's not visible. Then in element, in your controls, there is a custom layers drop down, custom texture maps. Under layer one, specify your diffuse comp. Then what you wanna do is go into your element settings, go into your scene setup, Come over here to where it says Diffuse Map, and you're gonna change this here in the dropdown to Custom Layer 1 that you've just set up. Say OK, and immediately here in the preview, you can see that shadow showing up. So I'm gonna say OK, give it a moment to refresh, and there we go, you can see it showing up. Now, you'll notice it's showing up a little bit weirdly. Um, the reason for that is because you need to apply this shadow not only to the Diffuse Layer, you need to re apply it to your reflection and your specular layers as well. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like, I'll quickly do the specular layer as well. So I'll take the specular map, make a comp. Let's just zoom out. Um, let's go back to our diffuse comp and I'm just gonna copy paste this shadow that we've set up. So copy and paste, there it is. And back to our F22 comp, let's put the specular layer into the comp again at the bottom, um, and then again through element, we will say our custom texture map layer two, it should use fighter jet exterior specular, and then again into scene setup. And in scene setup under specular, we are now gonna specify here in the dropdown to use custom layer two, say okay. Back to After Effects, let it refresh, and there you go, we can see what we're getting. So this is really the trick for faking shadows in Jet Strike or Element, is you need to actually modify the texture maps that get plugged into Element. Um, and what you can do is, in this layer here, you can over time, you can animate the shapes of these masks to travel as shadows would, and then they will show up in your comp. So. You know, in this example, as our aircraft starts to roll, you would need to animate that shadow to grow in length, and you'd obviously animate another one for the other tail. Um, something I haven't covered 
is animation of the flaps and the ailerons and the rudders. But again, there's great tutorials for that on the Video Copilot site, so I won't go into that. The purpose of this tutorial was to cover realistic lighting and rendering in Element. So I won't go into how to make these bits move because it's very straightforward. What I will quickly cover um, is just a note on the rendering setup. So if we just scrub forward to a moment later in time, say over here, at the moment we are looking at a half res comp. So what I'll do is I'll change that to full. Right, and let's zoom in. What you're noticing is on the aircraft body, there are all these terrible seams. Now, the way to correct that is to come into your element properties here under output. And under sampling and aliasing, by default it's set to eight. I find you can actually go a bit lower. You can leave that at four. Then what really matters is super sampling. Put super sampling on say two and FXAA smoothing, which I would imagine is some kind of aliasing or anti-aliasing, put that value at two. And you can start to see the effect this has on your model. You start to get much smoother edges um, and we start to get rid of all these funny little seams and lines that happen on the model. The final thing you wanna do is you wanna switch on motion blur so that as your aircraft banks out of the shot, it has motion blur like an object in the real world would. So. You access render settings in your element control panel here. Um, come down to where it says motion blur. Change it from comp settings to on. You can use the comp settings. I prefer to do it uh, a custom setup. By default, it's six motion blur samples, which gives you a pretty good result. And obviously, if we turn on our grade layer, get a really great looking result. Right, so that's it for this tutorial. I haven't covered everything in detail because I think a few points are fairly self-explanatory. Um, the real purpose of this was to demonstrate uh, how to set up realistic lighting in Element with Jetstrike and how to fake ray trace and shadows to get a pretty good result. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Scott Newman for Independent VFX. Cheers.